Okay, so in this video, I'll give you a brief concept of backwards and forwards movement in inventory valuation. So all firms keep a physical track of their inventory value so that they can include that in the statement of financial position in their income statement. So as a result, when you're physically counting inventory, it's very important to see the date on which you're counting your inventory. So for example, if the year end is on 31st December, but let's say for some reason the firm was unable to physically count its inventory till the 5th of Jan. So as a result, the firm will have to go backwards in this case to arrive at inventory on the 30th of December. But let's just first understand how the movement of, of inventory can be calculated. So let's say if I give you inventory at start or at a particular date from that, let's say when there are sales sales means that you've sold your inventory so i should subtract it from my inventory because that inventory is no longer there but this sales has to be at the cost price not at the selling price similarly if you buy new inventory i will add purchases because that purchases will be added to your inventory stock what about purchases return so now i can say that if i have purchases return i will subtract that why is that? Because when I return goods, that stock is no longer in my warehouse. So I will subtract it from my inventory value. But what happens if your customer returns goods? So in that case, I will add my, my sales return. Because if the customer has returned a good that I originally sold, that stock will now be included in my inventory count and will be a part of my physical inventory in the warehouse. But again, remember that when you're adding it, you have to include it at cost. So inventory should always be included at the cost price. So now one last thing, the owner can also withdraw stock. So if the owner takes up some stock, then I will subtract it because that stock is no longer there in my warehouse. And using this, we should arrive at the ending value of your inventory. So I can say this is my ending inventory value. Now, the case that I mentioned earlier, what happens that the firm was unable to count its inventory on the closing date of the financial year and had to count the inventory later. So in, so in that case, we will have to move backwards. So you guys can assume that if I have my inventory stock on the 5th of Jan and I need to go backwards to calculate my inventory on 31st December because my financial year end is on 31st December. So I will have to essentially draw this statement backwards. So I'll, so when I'm drawing this backwards, it means that anything that is being subtracted over here will be added and anything that is added over here will be subtracted. Right. So let's take a look how that statement should look like. So now I'm going to start with inventory at end. So you guys can think of it like this. This is inventory on 5th Jan. This is your inventory on 31st December. Now you will start with 5th Jan because you physically counted your inventory on the 5th of Jan. And now you have to go backwards to arrive at inventory at start. So when you're starting with inventory at a later date or at end date, what will happen? Over here, you guys can see sales was being subtracted. So now I should add back sales, right? Because you guys can think of it like this, that sales were goods that were sold. They were present on the 31st December, but they were sold between the period of 1st Jan to 5th December. So if your sales is being subtracted over here, it should be added. Purchases was being added. So now purchases should be subtracted because this stock was not present on the 31st December. It was purchased later onwards. So I should remove it to find inventory on the 31st of December. What about purchases return? It was being subtracted. Now you should add your purchases return. So purchases return should be added. And sales return was being added because that stock was being returned. It is now part of your inventory count. You need to remove that. So let's remove it. So I will say less sales return. And finally, what about drawings? So remember when the owner was taking that stock, that stock was being removed from this value. I need to find this. So I will add this back because this stock was present on the 31st December. That's the inventory that I want to calculate. 
and this way you will be able to arrive at inventory at start so you guys can think of it like this that when we start with this this is your forward valuation which is very simple over here when you sell goods you should subtract it when you buy goods you should add it but we are discussing the case of a backward valuation when you have inventory at a later date and you would want to go backwards to arrive at inventory at an earlier date which might be the date of your financial year end all right so i hope you guys understand the concept of forward valuation and backward valuation now i will apply this to a question in the next video